Hi everyone, this is Andrew Novins, and this is the third video in the series where we talk about how to take our microstation models out to the Unity game engine and then from there to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. As with the other videos, you should be watching them in conjunction with the written tutorial that I've posted on Bentley's microstation visualization forum. And this video is where the fun begins because we create our Unity project and set some default parameters. And then we will be importing some uh, prefabs and scripts that we'll need for our Unity project to work. So let's start Unity. And here you can see I'm using version 5.4 release candidate 2. Uh, so let's create a new project and give it a name. And make sure that it's a 3D project. Uh, we won't be using uh, Unity Analytics. And at this point, we have the option to add asset packages that we'll need for our project. So we can, for instance, decide to install the Steam VR plugin and the lab renderer. But if this is the first time that you're doing this, you won't see these listed here. So for now, let's not install those here and now, but rather install them manually in the Unity project. Uh, so the first thing that I'd like to do once I'm in Unity is to set the layout to the to default and to turn off the grid. It's just um, busy and doesn't really add much. Um, over here you can see the asset store in this tab. Now if in your version you don't have the asset store, um, you can always bring it back by going to Window Asset Store and then the tab will reappear. I also like to turn on the lighting tab and dock it over here. So let's go to Window Lighting and then take that tab and dock it, dock it next to the Inspector tab and then click on the Inspector tab to make it active. So over here in the Asset Store, let's start to install the plugins that we'll need. So the first one is the Steam VR plugin. And here it is, the Steam VR plugin from Valve Corporation. Click on that. The first time that you install this plugin, it will say download here, but I've already done that in the past, so for me it says import. But either way, click on the blue button, and it will then show you a list of items that it would like to import, and we want them all, so we just press import. And that'll just take a few moments, and then we will be presented with a dialog box showing us some default settings that it would like to use. So we'll just accept all of them, and it tells us that we've made the right choice. So over here in the Assets folder, you can see the Steam VR plugin has been added along with all of its scripts and prefabs and so on. So you can see here in this view, we are seeing a thumbnail view of the scripts. Um, which I find a little bit unhelpful, uh, mainly because it doesn't show us unique file names. Now, we can make the thumbnails larger, and sure enough, we see more of the file name, but there's plenty of cases where you still don't see completely unique file names. So for that reason, I prefer a list view, and to get the list view, you simply drag this all the way to the left, and now we see a, a nice list view with full file names, uh, easily readable. So I recommend that you do that. Now, the next thing we need to do is install the uh, lab renderer. So let's just do a search for the lab renderer. And here we see a, a list of hits. And the first one is the lab renderer from Valve Corporation. And that's the one that we want. So as before, we will click on the blue button to install it. And these are all the items that we would like to import, and we want them all, so we just press import. And then, as with the last one, we'll be presented with a dialog box with some default settings that it would like to use. And we just accept this one default setting. And again, we're told that we've made the right choice. And you can see it listed here in the asset store, the lab renderer. Um, at this point, we also need to install the SteamVR Unity Toolkit. Um, I spoke about that in the first video where um, the SteamVR Unity Toolkit is in fact available here in the Asset Store, but 
we don't want to use the version from the asset store we want to use the version from the github page and the first video explained how i downloaded the file from github unzipped it and prepared it for use uh, now so we finish with the asset store let's just close that and so now we want to install the SteamVR unity toolkit so to do that you can see from the first video i've already um, downloaded the toolkit and unzipped it into this folder and it's now ready to be used so to do that we start a second instance of unity and you can see the toolkit here so we'll just click on that and just wait for it to load and let's just move this second instance off to the side here so on the left here we have our new project and on the right here we have the uh, unity toolkit project so all we want to do is take this folder and drag it and drop it onto our own assets folder and so that'll just take a few moments to load all the scripts and you can see here we now have the uh, steam vr unity toolkit uh, installed into our project so let's just bring back our second instance of unity and close that and that's all of the stuff that we'll need to start creating our project but before we do that let's just set some default project parameters so we'll go to edit project settings uh, player so over here in the settings for the player we want to go to this other settings category and make sure that the experimental graphics jobs is turned on we need to make sure that virtual reality supported is turned on and we need to make sure that the virtual reality SDK is using the OpenVR SDK and that that's the only SDK in this list and then the final setting that we need to turn on is this single pass stereo render option um, and that's about it for those settings and so now we're ready to save our project or actually save our scene so we'll go to file save scene as and you can see that it's trying to save it to the assets folder um, but we want to create a new folder so I just right clicked on this area we went new folder and I'll call it scenes and I'll just enter that folder and I'll call my new scene main and now here in the assets folder you can see there's a new folder subfolder called scenes and in that subfolder is the main scene um, so we're now ready to start populating our project with assets so if we expand the main scene we can see that it comes with two default components um, the directional light and the main camera now as it turns out this main camera is not the main camera that we want we want a stereo virtual reality camera rig so this camera we will delete and we'll now come down to the steam vr plugin and in a subfolder called prefabs you'll see that there's a prefab called camera rig so we'll just take that and drag it and drop it onto our project and as a general rule whenever we drag and drop items into our project be it fbx files or camera rigs or whatever we really should just have a quick glance over here and make sure that the position rotation and scale is set to 001 um, it's very easy to drag and drop components into our scene or into this folder and have them randomly appear at, 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 at locations away from the origin and if that happens you'll find yourself scratching your head later on wondering why things aren't lining up so it's just good practice to make sure that all the things that you drag and drop in here are positioned at the origin as a starting point um, so the camera rig has some subcomponents in it mainly the controller for the left hand the controller for the right hand and then the head controller the head controller in turn has a camera eye and a camera ear uh, we won't be doing anything with with audio so we'll ignore the ear option but we will be doing stuff with the eye category there but for now let's just look at some of the settings that the camera rig itself has uh, now most of these are fine um, I've sometimes I've seen draw in camera turned on by default um, 
but we definitely want that to be off. Um, so what this means is that this blue rectangle, which represents the boundary of our room, um, this is saying, if this was on, that's saying to draw that in our virtual reality scene. And we definitely don't want to see that rectangle in our virtual reality scene. So just make sure that that's off. And then the other setting is this one here, the size of this rectangle. Um, this is telling Unity that, that our room is 3 by 2.25 metres wide. Now, that's not necessarily true. So what we really want the size to be is this calibrated size. And what that means is it will take the size of our room as we've set it up in our Steam VR uh, setup process. So um, definitely set that to calibrated. Now, okay, so that's that. So now let's go to, so that's all that we'll need from the Steam VR plugin. And the rest of the scripts will take from the SteamVR Unity Toolkit, uh, and specifically in this subfolder called Scripts. So the first script that we want to apply to our project is the Controller Events script. And this will simply tell the left controller and the right controller to be on the lookout for a button press. And so, and that's all that it does. Um, and we will be using that button press to initiate a uh, Bezier curve, which then in turn will initiate a teleport. So um, we will take this controller event script and drag it onto the left controller and then take it and drag it onto the right controller. And let's have a look at the settings for the controller events script. Now, as it turns out, these are all fine. We don't need to do anything. But again, I have noticed in the past, sometimes this pointer toggle button is set to the grip buttons on your controllers, which works fine, but it's just not the standard way that most apps and games in SteamVR do it. They, they seem to all use the touchpad press option. So I recommend that you, oh, I didn't mean to turn that on. Um, I recommend that you just check that the, the pointer toggle button is set to touch press. And so, Whatever we do to the left controller, we need to remember to do it to the right controller as well. So just click on the right controller and just check that the pointer toggle button is set to touch press, touchpad press. Um, the next script that we'll need is a Bezier pointer that will, or a pointer that will emanate out of the controller in our virtual reality environment. So we have the option of a Bezier pointer, but we also have a simple pointer. Now, the simple pointer is really just a laser beam that comes out of your hand controller. And I find it not terribly helpful. Um, so the, this simple pointer would only allow you to teleport to regions of your model that you can actually see. Uh, if you wanted to teleport to a platform above your head, well, you can't see that platform. So you can't aim the teleporter to land on the platform. So the simple pointer turns out not to be so useful, but the Bezier pointer is the one we want. So with the Bezier pointer, if we um, press the button, we'll see a big Bezier curve emanating from the controller. And if we control, aim the controller up into the sky, there'll be a big curve going up into the sky and then coming down and landing on a platform that's potentially uh, a lot higher than your head. So th this is definitely the pointer that we want, we want to be using. So we'll just drag that onto the left controller and then drag it onto the right controller. And then again, let's have a look at the settings for, for that script. Um, so here on the left controller, you can see there's a bunch of scripts and, and they're all fine as they are, but I do like to make just some minor changes. So here in the pointer length, uh, by default it's set to 10 meters. Um, I like to set that to maybe 15 meters. And then here, there's a value called pointer density. Uh, the Bezier curve that emanates from your controller is actually approximated with a series of, of spheres. Um, and so those, so this setting is, is saying use 10 spheres to approximate the Bezier curve. And, and that's not a lot. Um, it doesn't look terribly curve-like with 10 spheres. So I'd like to change that to either 15 or 20 or whatever suits you. But um, but don't go overboard with this because there'll be a performance hit in, in render times if it's rendering you know, too many 
uh, spheres. The other setting that I like to change is the color of the hit pointer color and the miss pointer color. Um, so if we click on that, you can see there's an RGB value that we can change, but we also have an alpha channel, which is the transparency. So as we move the transparency left and right, you can see this white line underneath the color indicates how much, um, well, opacity we have. So, so this is maximum opacity and this is maximum transparency. So I've been just setting this to 50% transparency. So we'll set 128 and set the mist color to 128. And, and that's pretty much all the changes that we want to make to this script. Now, as I've mentioned before, whatever we do to the left controller, we need to remember to do it to the right controller as well. So let's just make the transparency to 128, the mist color to 128, the pointer length to 15 meters, and the pointer density to about 20. So, um, that's all the settings that we want to do for the Bezier pointer. And now the last script that we want to use is the height adjust teleport script. Um, now there is a simpler version of that, which is called the basic teleport script. So with the basic teleport script, you can only teleport along a single plane. And that might be fine if, if you just got a single floor in your building. Um, but the moment that you want to start teleporting up and down stairs or onto another level in your building or on the roof of your building or onto ramps outside in your terrain, um, this won't do that. So you will need the height adjust teleporter. Now, using the height adjust teleporter means that you have had to have already created the collision mesh that I mentioned in video number two. Um, so the collision mesh needs to include geometry that goes upstairs and downstairs and you know level one and two and three and roof levels and so on. So as long as you've got that in place, you can then use the height adjust teleporter to teleport to different heights. So this is the one that we want to use. Um, so unlike the other two scripts where we drop them on the two controllers, this one we drop onto the camera rig itself. So let's go to the camera rig and we can see the height adjust teleporter is here. Uh, now all these settings are fine except for this last one here. This we definitely want to turn off. Um, play space falling, what, what that means, and, and initially it sounded like a good idea, but what, what it does is as you move physically in your room and if your head moves across a stairwell in, in the virtual environment, um, it will try to automatically move your head down the staircase or up the staircase um, to maintain a, max, a, a consistent height of your virtual head above the virtual ground. And so for staircases, you might think, oh, that sounds like a good idea. But in the case of uh, roof parapets, I find that I'm, I'm standing on the roof parapet and I want to stick my head out beyond the edge of the roof to look down at the ground beyond. And if this is turned on, what happens in that case is that as soon as your head goes beyond the edge of the, the roof parapet, you'll find yourself instantly teleport, teleported down to the ground level. And that's not what you want. Uh, it's really annoying. So um, I definitely recommend turning this off. And that's about all we need to do for our scripts and our project. So, and that's the end of this video. So the next video, I think we will, let's just look at our tutorial here. In the next video, we will talk about uh, the import process of our FBX files and then adding those FBX files to our project. So that's it for now. Thanks and see you next time.